The Dana Law, as recorded in the Anglo-Saxon Chronicle, is a historical name given to the part of England in which the laws of the Danes held sway and dominated those of the Anglo-Saxons. It is contrasted with where Saxon law and Mercian law. The term has been extended by modern historians to be geographical. The areas that constituted the Dana law are in northern and eastern England. The origins of the Dana law arose from the Viking expansion of the 9th century AD, although the term was not used to describe a geographic area until the 11th century AD. With the increase in population and productivity in Scandinavia, Viking warriors, having sought treasure and glory in the nearby British Isles, proceeded to plough and support themselves, in the words of the Anglo-Saxon Chronicle, for the year 876. Dana law is also used to describe the set of legal terms and definitions created in the treaties between the West Saxon king, Alfred the Great, and the Danish warlord, Guthrum, written following Guthrum's defeat at the Battle of Eddington in 878. In 886, the Treaty of Alfred and Guthrum was formalized, defining the boundaries of their kingdoms, with provisions for peaceful relations between the English and the Vikings. The language spoken in England was also affected by this clash of cultures with the emergence of Anglo-Norse dialects. The Dana law roughly comprises fifteen shires, Yorkshire, five boroughs of Leicester, Nottingham, Derby, Stamford and Lincoln, as well as Essex, the Kingdom of East Anglia shires of Cambridgeshire, Suffolk and Norfolk, East Midlands shires of Northamptonshire, Huntingdonshire, Bedfordshire, Hertfordshire, Middlesex and Buckinghamshire one-third of the total area of the English kingdom at the time. Background From around 800, there had been waves of Danish raids on the coastlines of the British Isles. In 865, instead of raiding, the Danes landed a large army in East Anglia, with the intention of conquering the four Anglo-Saxon kingdoms of England. The armies of various leaders had come together to provide one combined force under a leadership that included half Dan Ragnarsson and Ivor the Boneless, the sons of the legendary Viking leader Ragnar Lodbrok. The combined army was described in the annals as the Great Heathen Army. After making peace with a local East Anglian king in return for horses, the Great Heathen Army moved north. In 867 they captured Northumbria and its capital, York defeating both the recently deposed King Osbert of Northumbria and the usurper Allah of Northumbria. The Danes then placed an Englishman, Igbert I of Northumbria, on the throne of Northumbria as a puppet ruler. King Atheld of Wessex and his brother, Alfred, led their army against the Danes at Nottingham, but the Danes refused to leave their fortifications. King Burgrade of Mercia then negotiated peace with Ivor, with the Danes keeping Nottingham in exchange for leaving the rest of Mercia unmolested. Under Ivor the Boneless, the Danes continued their invasion in 869 by defeating King Edmund of East Anglia at Hoxton and conquering East Anglia. Once again, the brothers Atheld and Alfred attempted to stop Ivor by attacking the Danes at Reading. They were repelled with heavy losses. The Danes pursued, and on January 7, 871, Atheld and Alfred defeated the Danes at the Battle of Ashdown. The Danes retreated to Basing, where Atheld attacked and was, in turn, defeated. Ivor was able to follow up this victory with another in March at Meritum. On April 23, 871, King Atheld died and Alfred succeeded him as King of Wessex. His army was weak and he was forced to pay tribute to Ivor in order to make peace with the Danes. During this peace the Danes turned to the north and attacked Mercia, a campaign that lasted until 874. Both the Danish leader Ivor and Mercian leader Burgrave died during this campaign. Ivor was succeeded by Guthrum, who finished the campaign against Mercia. In ten years the Danes gained control over East Anglia, Northumbria and Mercia, leaving only Wessex to resist. Guthrum and the Danes brokered peace with Wessex in 876, when they captured the fortresses of Warham and Exeter. Alfred laid siege to the Danes, who were forced to surrender after reinforcements were lost in a storm. Two years later, Guthrum again attacked Alfred, surprising him by attacking his forces wintering in Chippenham. King Alfred was saved when the Danish army coming from his rear was destroyed by inferior forces at the Battle of Sinuit. The modern location of Sinuit is disputed but suggestions include Countisbury Hill, near Linmouth Devon or Kinwith Castle, 
by Deford Devon or Cannington, near Bridgewater, Somerset. Alfred was forced into hiding for a time, before returning in the spring of 878 to gather an army and attack Guthrum at Addington. The Danes were defeated and retreated to Chippenham, where King Alfred laid siege and soon forced them to surrender. As a term of surrender, King Alfred demanded that Guthrum be baptized a Christian. King Alfred served as his godfather. Establishment of Danish self-rule, this peace lasted until 884, when Guthrum again attacked Wessex. Alfred defeated him, with peace codified in the Treaty of Alfred and Guthrum. The treaty outlined the boundaries of the Dana law and allowed for Danish self-rule in the region. The Dana law represented a consolidation of power for Alfred. The subsequent conversion of Guthrum to Christianity underlines the ideological significance of this shift in the balance of power. Edward the Elder and his sister, Athelfla D, the Lady of the Mercians, conquered Danish territories in the Midlands and East Anglia in a series of campaigns in the 910s, and some Danish jewels who submitted were allowed to keep their lands. Viking rule ended when Eric Bloodaxe was driven out of Northumbria in 954. The reasons for the waves of immigration were complex and bound to the political situation in Scandinavia at that time. Moreover, they occurred when Viking settlers were also establishing their presence in the Hebrides, Orkney, the Faroe Islands, Ireland, Iceland, Greenland, France, Russia and Ukraine. Knut and his successors The Danes did not give up their designs on England. From 1016 to 1035 Knut the Great ruled over a unified English kingdom, itself the product of a resurgent Wessex, as part of his North Sea Empire, together with Denmark, Norway, and part of Sweden. Knut was succeeded in England on his death by his son Harold Harefoot, until he died in 1040, after which another of Knut's sons, Hartaknut, took the throne. Since Hartaknut was already on the Danish throne, this reunited the North Sea Empire. Hartaknut lived only another two years, and from his death in 1042 until 1066 the monarchy reverted to the English line in the form of Edward the Confessor. Edward died in January 1066 without an obvious successor, and an English nobleman, Harold Godwinson, took the throne. In the autumn of that same year, two rival claimants to the throne led invasions of England in short succession. First, Harold Hardrada of Norway took York in September, but was defeated by Harold at the Battle of Stamford Bridge, in Yorkshire. Then, three weeks later, William of Normandy defeated Harold at the Battle of Hastings, in Sussex, and in December he accepted the submission of Edgar the A. Feeling, last in the line of Anglo-Saxon kings, at Barkhamsted. The Dana law appeared in legislation as late as the early 12th century with the legs in received me where it is referred to as one of the laws together with those of Wessex and Mercia into which England was divided. Danish-Norwegian conflict in the North Sea, in the 11th century, when King Magnus I had freed Norway from Knud the Great, the terms of the peace treaty provided that the first of the two kings Magnus and Hartaknut to die would leave their dominion as an inheritance to the other. When Edward the Confessor ascended the throne of a united Dano-Saxon England, a Norse army was raised from every Norwegian colony in the British Isles and attacked Edward's England in support of Magnus, and after his death, his brother Harold Hardradas, claimed to the English throne. On the accession of Harold Godwinson after the death of Edward the Confessor, Hardrada invaded Northumbria with the support of Harold's brother Tostig Godwinson, and was defeated at the Battle of Stamford Bridge, three weeks before William I's victory at the Battle of Hastings. Chronology 800 A Waves of Danish Assaults on the Coastlines of the British Isles 865 A Danish raiders first began to settle in England. Led by brothers Halfdan and Ivor the Boneless, they wintered in East Anglia, where they demanded and received tribute in exchange for a temporary peace. From there they moved north and attacked Northumbria, which was in the midst of a civil war between the deposed King Osbet and a usurper Allah. The Danes used the civil turmoil as an opportunity to capture York, which they sacked and burned. 867 are following the loss of York, Osbet and Ulla formed an alliance against the Danes. They launched a counterattack, but the Danes killed both Osbet and Ulla and set up a puppet king on Northumbrian throne. In response, King Athelde of Wessex, 
along with his brother Alfred marched against the Danes, who were positioned behind fortifications in Nottingham, but were unable to draw them into battle. In order to establish peace, King Barad of Mercia ceded Nottingham to the Danes in exchange for leaving the rest of Mercia undisturbed. 869 of all the boneless returned and demanded tribute from King Edmund of East Anglia. 870 of King Edmund refused, of all the boneless defeated and captured him at Hoxne adding East Anglia to the area controlled by the invading Danes. King Atheld and Alfred attacked the Danes at Reading, but were repulsed with heavy losses. The Danes pursued them. 871 on January 7 they made their stand at Ashdown. Atheld could not be found at the start of battle, as he was busy praying in his tent, so Alfred led the army into battle. Atheld and Alfred defeated the Danes, who counted among their losses five jewels. The Danes retreated and set up fortifications at Basing in Hampshire, a mere fourteen miles from Reading. Atheld attacked the Danish fortifications and was routed. Danes followed up victory with another victory in March at Meritum. King Athel died on April 23, 871 and Alfred took the throne of Wessex, but not before seriously considering abdicating the throne in light of the desperate circumstances, which were further worsened by the arrival in reading of a second Danish army from Europe. For the rest of the year Alfred concentrated on attacking with small bands against isolated groups of Danes. He was moderately successful in this endeavour and was able to score minor victories against the Danes, but his army was on the verge of collapse. Alfred responded by paying off the Danes in order for a promise of peace. During the peace the Danes turned north and attacked Mercia, which they finished off in short order, and captured London in the process. King Burgred of Mercia fought in vain against the Ivor the Boneless and his Danish invaders for three years until 874, when he fled to Europe. During Ivara Euro unregistered trademark S campaign against Mercia he died and was succeeded by Guthrum the Old as the main protagonist in the Denisa Euro unregistered trademark drive to conquer England. Guthrum quickly defeated Burgrade and placed a puppet on the throne of Mercia. The Danes now controlled East Anglia, Northumbria and Mercia, with only Wessex continuing to resist. 875 of the Danes settled in Dorset, well inside of Alfreda Euro unregistered trademark S Kingdom of Wessex, but Alfred quickly made peace with them. 876 of the Danes broke the peace when they captured the fortress of Warham, followed by a similar capture of Exeter in 877. 877 Alfred laid siege, while the Danes waited for reinforcements from Scandinavia. Unfortunately for the Danes, the fleet of reinforcements encountered a storm and lost more than 100 ships, and the Danes were forced to return to East Mercia in the north. 878 In January Guthrum led an attack against Wessex that sought to capture Alfred while he wintered in Chippenham. Another Danish army landed in South Wales and moved south with the intent of intercepting Alfred should he flee from Guthrum a Euro unregistered trademark S forces. However, they stopped during their march to capture a small fortress at Countysbury Hill, held by a Wessex ealdorman named Odder. The Saxons, led by Odder, attacked the Danes while they slept and defeated the superior Danish forces, saving Alfred from being trapped between the two armies. Alfred was forced to go into hiding for the rest of the winter and spring of 878 in the Somerset marshes in order to avoid the superior Danish forces. In the spring Alfred was able to gather an army and attack Guthrum and the Danes at Addington. The Danes were defeated and retreated to Chippenham, where the English pursued and laid siege to Guthrum a Euro unregistered trademark S forces. The Danes were unable to hold out without relief and soon surrendered. Alfred demanded as a term of the surrender that Guthrum become baptized as a Christian, which Guthrum agreed to do, with Alfred acting as his godfather. Guthrum was true to his word and settled in East Anglia, at least for a while. 884 A Guthrum attacked Kent, but was defeated by the English. This led to the Treaty of Alfred and Guthrum, which established the boundaries of the Dana law and allowed for Danish self rule in the region. 902 Essex submits to Edwald. 903 A Edwald incites the East Anglian Danes into breaking the peace. They ravaged Mercia before winning a Pyrrhic victory that saw the death of Edward and the Danish king Yehrik. This allows Edward the Elder to consolidate power. 
911 at the English defeat the Danes at the Battle of Tettenhall. The Northumbrians ravage Mercia but are trapped by Edward and forced to fight. 917 In return for peace and protection the kingdoms of Essex and East Anglia accept Edward the Elder as their suzerain overlord. Athelf Lady, Lady of the Mercians, takes the borough of Derby. 918 of the borough of Leicester submits peaceably to Athelf Lady's rule. The people of York promise to accept her as their overlord, but she dies before this could come to fruition. She is succeeded by her brother, the kingdoms of Mercia and Wessex united in the person of King Edward. 919 A Norwegian Vikings under King Ragnvald Sigtryggsson of Dublin take York. 920 Edward is accepted as father and lord by the King of the Scots, by Ranold, the sons of Edulf, the English, Norwegians, Danes and others all of whom dwell in Northumbria, and the king and people of the Strathclyde Welsh. 954 A King Eric is driven out of Northumbria, his death marking the end of the prospect of the northern Viking kingdom stretching from York to Dublin and the Isles. 1066 A Harold Hardrada lands with an army, hoping to take control of York and the English crown. He is defeated and killed at the Battle of Stamford Bridge. This event is often cited as the end of the Viking era. The same year William the Conqueror, himself a descendant of Danish or Norwegian Vikings, successfully took the English throne and became the first Norman King of England, 1069 as Swin II of Denmark lands with an army, in much the same way as Harald Hardrada. He took control of York after defeating the Norman garrison and inciting a local uprising. King William eventually defeated his forces and devastated the region in the harrying of the north. 1075 A one of Swain's sons, Nut, set sail for England to support an English rebellion, but it had been crushed before they arrived, so they settled for plundering the city of York and surrounding area, before returning home. 1085 A Nut, now king, planned a major invasion against England but the assembled fleet never sailed. There was no serious invasions or raids of England by the Danes after this. Geography The area occupied by the Dana law was roughly the area to the north of a line drawn between London and Chester, excluding the portion of Northumbria to the east of the Pennines. Five fortified towns became particularly important in the Dana law, Leicester, Nottingham, Derby, Stamford and Lincoln, broadly delineating the area now called the East Midlands. These strongholds became known as the Five Boroughs. Borough derives from the Old English word B-U-R-H, meaning a fortified and walled enclosure containing several households a year or anything from a large stockade to a fortified town. The meaning has since developed further. Legal Concepts The Dana law was an important factor in the establishment of a civilian peace in the neighboring Anglo-Saxon and Viking communities. It established, for example, equivalences in areas of legal contentiousness, such as the amount of reparation that should be payable and were jailed. Many of the legalistic concepts were compatible. For example the Viking wapentake, the standard for land division in the Dana law, was effectively interchangeable with the hundred. The use of the execution site and cemetery at Walkington World in East Yorkshire suggests a continuity of judicial practice. Legacy the influence of this period of Scandinavian settlement can still be seen in the north of England and the East Midlands, and is particularly evident in place names, name endings such as How, by Thorpe having Norse origins. There seems to be a remarkable number of Kirby Kirkby names, some with remains of Anglo-Saxon building indicating both a Norse origin and early church building. Scandinavian names blended with the English tongue give rise to typical hybrid place names. Old East Norse and Old English were still somewhat mutually comprehensible. The contact between these languages in the Dana law caused the incorporation of many Norse words into the English language, including the word law itself, sky and window, and the third person plural pronouns they, them and their. Many Old Norse words still survive in the dialects of Northern England. Four of the five boroughs became county towns a euro of the counties of Leicestershire, Lincolnshire. Nottinghamshire and Derbyshire. However, Stamford failed to gain such status a euro perhaps because of the nearby autonomous territory of Rutland. Genetic heritage. 
In 2000 the BBC commissioned a genetic survey of the British Isles by a team from University College London led by Professor David Goldstein for its programme Blood of the Vikings. It concluded that Norse invaders settled sporadically throughout the British Isles with a particular concentration in certain areas, such as Orkney and Shetland. In this finding, the Vikings refers to Norwegian Vikings only, as the study did not set out to genetically distinguish descendants of Danish Vikings from descendants of Anglo-Saxon settlers. That was decided on the basis that the latter two groups originated from areas that overlap each other on the continental North Sea coast, and were therefore deemed inconvenient or difficult to genetically distinguish. Archaeology, major archaeological sites that bear testimony to the Danelaw are few. The most famous is the site at York. Another Danelaw site is the cremation site at Heathwood, Inglebe, Derbyshire. Archaeological sites do not bear out the historically defined area as being a real demographic or trade boundary. This could be due to misallocation of the items and features on which this judgment is based as being indicative of either Anglo-Saxon or Norse presence. Otherwise, it could indicate that there was considerable population movement between the areas, or simply that after the treaty was made, it was ignored by one or both sides. Thingo was an important Dana Law meeting place, today located in Sherwood Forest, in Nottinghamshire. The word how often indicates a prehistoric burial mound. How is derived from the Old Norse word hauga meaning mound. The site's rediscovery was made by Linda Mallet, Stuart Reddish and John Wood. The site had vanished from modern maps and was essentially lost to history until the local history enthusiasts made their discoveries. Experts think the rediscovered site, which lies amidst the old oaks of an area known as the Birklands in Sherwood Forest, may also yield clues as to the boundary of the ancient Anglo-Saxon kingdoms of Mercia and Northumbria. English Heritage recently inspected the site and believes it is a national rarity. Thingo was a place where people came to resolve disputes and settle issues. It is a Norse word, although the site may be older still, perhaps even from the Bronze Age. See also, List of generic forms in British place names, Longhouse. MJA Paragraph LLNIR, Norse Gales, Raven Banner, Runestone, Stave Church, Subpoena Ad Testificandum, Falknut, References. Further reading, Types of Manorial Structure in the Northern Dana Law, Frank M. Stenton, London, 1910. The Anglo-Saxon Chronicles, Tiger Books International Version translated and collated by Anne Savage, 1995. Community Archaeology at Thingo, Birklands, Sherwood Forest by Linda Mallet, Stuart Reddish, John Baker, Stuart Brooks and Andy Gaunt. Transactions of the Throton Society of Nottinghamshire, Volume 116, Amour, Alon. Danela. In Chisholm, Hugh. Encyclopaedia Britannica 7. Cambridge University Press PPA 803 Euro 804 a, External links, News Item. BBC Blood of the Vikings, BBC Viking History Links, According to Ancient Custom, Research on the Possible Origins and Purpose of Thingo Sherwood Forest.